while. I was created to worship. What a wonderful selection. Welcome to Real Issues with Dr. Pastor Bello and the Sisters. We are back. We are back, and we are back. My name is Kimmy Kill, and let me open the lines for my friend, my sister, the, the host of the show, Dr. Pastor Bello. How are you doing? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I When you sent me that message on today regarding the show, I was like, yes, we are back, we are back, we are back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good. I, I pray that everybody can hear you um, because, I'm, you know, I'm testing. I'm testing, I'm testing. I'm doing new ways to try to reach people. So this time okay. we're doing it through um, Facebook, Zoom, and Elections Radio. So we're going to see how this Look works. Look at you. <laughs> well, let's do it. I'm sure we're going yes. to be loud and clear because, you know, God is with us. We got this. Amen. Amen. Um, I do have uh, Reverend Salome. She's on the line. You know, she's now one of our permanents that's coming on here, which I'm happy to say because she brings Yay. us expertise. So we're going to ask her to open us up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, we want to thank you for this time. We pray as we are about to talk, to discuss, oh Lord, about what is going on. Give us wisdom, give us understanding, and lead us in the right path to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so Amen. sorry. Amen. Amen. Okay, Amen. so we're, this is a, a brand new way of of how we are trying to do the show so we can reach more people. And I'm a firm believer there's no need of trying to do a show if we're not reaching the targeted area. So with that being said, a lot of hot topics are going around. doesn't mean necessarily we have to cover every hot topic. But some of the hot topics I do want to cover on here. And what we have is we have, I call them um, SMA, subject matter experts. We have uh, Reverend Akeem. She owns her own daycare center. She's wrote, I believe it's uh, the third book, Dr. Akeem. Uh, Reverend Akeem. Yeah, I'm on the third. I, I wrote two books now. Yeah, two books, and she's on the third. And um, then we have Dr. Kimmy who is uh, out there in the workforce with her two children and just blasting and doing it up. So we got, um, and then I'm in also the ministry world, as Reverend Akeem is, and my specialty to all this is just bottom line management. That's what my degree was in, just bottom line management. So what we're going to start off is the first question that a lot of people want to ask is, are we preparing for when this COVID is over? And, or are we still shocked, scared, confused? Um, but uh, what I want everybody to know, we should be in preparation mode because the shock, the thrill, the scared, all that is, is a way. And I'm referencing in the Bible when it's several references that I have for um well, actually inside the Bible. Um, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for God is with me. Because he's with us 24-7, seven, seven days uh, a week. So we should never, ever, ever um, be afraid. That's one of the ones that um, that we actually overall are referencing um, tonight. And... The second one that I'm also uh, going to bring up, and this is a famous one, as soon as I get the, um, I want to bring it up so I can read it. First Samuel 38, and he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and shalt without fail recover all. And that's the stage that we're in. We already went through the asking stage, should I, should I, should I? And God is telling us, look, you need to proceed, overtake, recover everything that I have for you. 
And um, a lot of us, we're still not hearing the words that God is trying to tell us. So I'm going I'm to bring it over to Reverend Akeem. Uh, how are you preparing, especially the children, for to get back into, I guess you would say, what society calls as a norm? Um, to me, and the way I was raised, norm is whatever is acceptable with inside of your, um, I should say, your uh, geographic area. Um, I was raised that you are always polite no matter what. Um, you you criticism, you know. So that was my norm. So um, are the children preparing or are you moving them forward to understand that, yes, y'all will be going back to school. Um, you will be with teachers. It's probably going to be barriers in between each student. You still got to wear your mask. But um, what are the steps that you, you're trying to take? Because, you know, all this is new. It's, it's brand new. We, we are just living on God's word trying to get through. So um, go ahead. Yeah, we all know the times, are, the times are very, very challenging right now about what is going on. Some parents have started even trying to, like, right out to test it to see if the kids, you know, we, 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 Talk it in, you know, because now people are saying, the teachers are saying they want all the teachers to be vaccinated before they, they, they like, you know. Sorry, that was me. I messed up. <laughs> uh, so now the teachers are saying they want all the teachers to be vaccinated, but they are not thinking, what about the kids? Right. Are all the kids going to be vaccinated also? Right. But the only thing is that for the kids, I'm not sure it's going to be hard because kids are still going to be, they want to go. They miss their friends. They miss that friendship. They miss that togetherness. They miss it a lot. So it's not going to be hard. Everything is left with us, the grown-ups. Because for the kids, it's not going to be hard for them to adjust. Right. You know, to be normal again. They can't wait for it even. So can't wait for it. How, how is that, um, would you say, because, you know, kids are going to be kids. And like you said, they want, to, they want to be around their friends. They can't. They understand, but they don't understand. So yes, what, what, what are you actually seeing that the children are trying to do to make sure that they still have that? Because that's why children, it's a good idea for children to go to school, to go to yes. daycare, is so they can develop social skills. Now, we have children that this was their first year of school uh, when September started um, that they had to do online. So that social skill part, they missed. Um, Then we have some that had already started school in 2019 going into 2020, and then it stopped. So they really didn't understand about social skills, you know, because some of these children are, are the only child. So they used to having everything to themselves. You know, mine, 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 mine. Um, and when I was reading some journals on um, social skills that it should start early, um, this they said that this is a critical time that they've lost. So what what did you say um, to everybody now that's thinking about it, saying, you know, yeah, you're right. Um, my little Susie was supposed to go to school, and, you know, she did everything from home. So what should I be doing to try to make sure she still have those social skills that she would have had if she would have went to school? That's why we always say that learning starts from the home. It is our duty as parents to start teaching our kids mm-hmm. that social skills, start telling them the reality of life. Right. It is our duty to start telling them that, start teaching them what it is. It is what it is. And they have to know. Even right. as they go out, we have to educate them about what is going on and how they should take precautions. So, uh, Dr. Kimmy, what are your children yeah. doing to keep their social skills up? Well, basically, we have been in school. So, um, basically, um, I want to say... Uh, with all humanity, um, the less that we were able to do the things before this happened because since they are in the 10th grade and the 6th grade, 
they already have friends and things of that sort. So it would impact those like the pre Ks and the kindergartens more so. But we are in school. They do virtually learning and um of course they prefer to go in person but they they doing quite well. Actually my oldest one is doing better than she would normally do in person. And um so I would say it hasn't really affected their social skills since they have their friends due to the previous years. Um, but I know they are ready to go back to school. <laughs> I think some of the parents are ready for them to go back to school. It's not like well, they were giving the child a choice. You going, you going. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I gave Hannah the choice if you want to go or stay. So she has it where she goes in on Monday and Tuesday, and then they're both off on Wednesday. And on Thursdays mm-hmm. and Fridays, they have virtual learning. But Hannah um, does part-time in-person, where Candace does everything virtual. She's a high schooler. So they oh. don't really, they, yeah, they haven't skipped a beat. I'm thankful, but I feel really bad to those pre k because they're not understanding, like, why do we have to stay home and what is going on? And so, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's I the thing I laugh bad. too because I know uh, uh, Reverend Solomon know because I'll see the children like uh, um, some of my appointments I go to, and I see the children. You can see the ones that's in pre K kindergarten how restless they are. You know, and oh, the parent the parent uh-huh. is like, okay, come on, it's time to log on, and they looking like, why? You know, I don't even understand <laughs> what I'm doing. You come on, come on, let's log on. You know, and I kind of feel bad yeah. too. Or the parent, because the parent, you, you force them to be teachers, you know. know and exactly. then with the economy the way it is, they were forced to be home anyway because there's a lot of jobs that was lost. So, you know, mm-hmm. to get back to uh, a society norm, it, it's going to take slow pace because a lot of people have changed. And, and um, Dr. Kimmy can relate to this. Teenagers, especially girls, they this way today. They some other way tomorrow. So, uh-huh. <laughs> so you know, that's going to take a lot because uh, when I was home, I was doing A, B, C, and then I could always mm-hmm. get my snack when I wanted to. Exactly. I could talk on the phone when I wanted to, you know, in between class. But, you know, getting back to school, some of that's not allowed. Some schools don't even allow you to bring the phone in. If you have the phone, it has to be off the whole time and it can't be seen, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's a lot that has to be dealt with. Um I did read in Maryland uh, where they're going to slowly inter- um, to bring kids back, but a lot of teachers was like, I don't want to go back. You know, I, I don't want to go back because it's going back to what Reverend Solomon said. I don't know where that child's been, what that child is exactly. going to bring back to me in class, you know. Exactly. So that, that's a lot that's going on, too, there. Mm-hmm. But the, um, the actual, uh, how should I say, the ones that's going to school, uh, and I put it this way, the parents that got jobs now, they have to, the child has to go back to school uh-huh. because, you know, they have to keep the job. So with that, this goes into our second question, which is how we see the economy slash stimulus and what's in it, you know, uh, what what we think that should come out of it. Now, I do know that going to, because a lot of people you know, they talk and talk, but a lot of people don't want to read. Some of this stuff is on YouTube. All you got to do is listen. Um, but they got the different figures. I'm, I'm, I really applaud the government for taking care of the uh, households that have children. You know, I know in Maryland they did a lot. They tried to make sure that they had breakfast, uh, snack, and lunch. You know, they did the, um, what is it, the EBT. They raised that up so they was able to buy more food. That's when society started knowing that it was something called food deserts. Food deserts are when people live in an environment that it takes a car to get to the store, which they can't get to the store because they can't afford the car. And, by the way, they can't afford to catch a Uber or a bus, so they're getting high prices at the gas stations and at the convenience stores. They call those areas the food deserts. So you might have EBT, but it's eating it up because you can't really get to the grocery store. So Isaiah 54, 17, um, 
What God has for you, no one can take it away. Remember what God has for you, it's yours. Can't nobody take it away nor stop you from receiving it. So we're talking about these stimulus, we're talking about these EBT, and I say everything in our lives is based on scripture. Mind you, now, this was written before we even knew that anything like a COVID was going to happen. So just be mindful, if that is for you, miracles have happened every day. Things have changed. So if this particular bill or whatever is for you, God is going to make sure that you get it. Nobody will be able to take it away. So now I'm going to start with Dr. Kimmy. Um, and your girls is, is, is a little bit older. You know, they were talking about the EIC and how it's going to be filtered in. But my concern is your 10th grader is preparing for 11th grade, which means that, oh, yeah, by the way, we might need to start looking at colleges. So, you know, they need to think about, to me, government, how we're going to do this. Because children that have worked very hard through this pandemic – they want to get into the college they want to get in. And by the way, you're taking away, mm-hmm. you already took away graduations last year. Now you're taking away the mm-hmm. famous, which I loved for my uh, daughters when they went the road trips where we took a week off and just visited as many colleges, you know, as we could. You know, what, what are you supposed to do now? Um, because they're going to give you, you know, the stimulus, but this, you, you still need to get funding for the child to go to school. You know, they're saying, oh, they're going to relieve some money for student loans. Okay, we're not even there yet. I'm trying to figure out, okay, you know, like a lot of parents, they have not been working. How am I going to even fan them for my child to go to, to college, you know? So what what do you have for a suggestion? Because all we have is suggestions. You know, not, nothing is iron tight. Well, what we've been doing, Candace has been focusing on, where she wants to go and what she wants to do. She wants to be a neurologist doctor, right? So I said to her, well, if that's the case, you need to make sure that we get some scholarships. So we've been looking at different um, universities, and she's been doing Zoom calls with the um, mission offices of various colleges. So that is one thing. Mm -hmm. And what I would tell, um, like, uh, the parents with high schoolers, um, Try to really let them take the charge. Um, I found if I try to dictate where I want her to go, it's not as fun. But if you allow them to, you know, communicate what they want to do, give them a little sense of freedom to choose where they want to go, it's a really good process. So, so far, it's been pretty positive. Her grades is really good. But um, she wants to go to California or she was thinking about um, USC or Berkeley or Atlanta, going to Emory or Georgia Tech. One of those two are just staying in, in St. Louis because we do have Washington University, which is one of the, one of the top uh, medical schools. So right now I've just been uh, making sure that she stays focused on her studies and maintain a GPA so that we can get some scholarships and we're going to practice on the ACT and the SAT, making sure that she can at least get as high as possible. So we're going to work on that in her 11th and 12th grade. And just, I'm trying, what I do now, I have learned to let her enjoy her high school years because it's not the traditional, I mean, she hasn't yet gone to a dance or anything. And I really feel bad because high school was one of my favorite moments of my life as a teen. I had a good high school um, um, years, you know, the four years, I mean, the four years in high school. And unfortunately, I feel bad for the children who don't get to experience, you know, like the homecoming and the proms and the graduations and then the graduation after party and the gathering <laughs> and just having fun. I mean, I had a Look, great they, they time. They can't have all that long. They take feet apart. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the same because you have limitations. You only have so many people in, in the room, and it was just different. I really feel bad for them. So if we get vaccinated, and I'm still, you know, praying on that. <laughs> well, y'all know we are way at the bottom of the list. I think some places like Maryland, we still on one A, one uh, no one B, one C. So by the time they get to me, I think I'm in category like. Uh, 3B or even 4, I, that uh-huh. might be 
that shit sometimes. They probably be that came out with a, a new and improved, uh, you know. So I'm not I know, even... right? I don't want to take two. <laughs> I, I have a problem with taking two of them. I'm like, I don't want to take two. No. But you have to because, you know, so, if you take one and don't take the other, it's like not even taking the one. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, I like that. Now with Johnson Johnson, <laughs> they have it where it's 67 um, effective, but you just take one shot. But I know. I know. You know I'm going with the better for this. Jump star. Yeah, I know. I'm about to go with the better. But Reverend Akeem, yeah. so what are we doing for the um the people that's in uh your I call them the little people, you know, because they're the future that you have. You have the spanking brand new future, um, right there in your daycare. So what are you doing to try to get them to understand that okay? You get ready to go to a new adventure, and you thought this was something. Well, you know what? Hold on tight. You got a bigger ride to come. It's really hard because the kids, they don't actually understand. You know, I know they know the word, like they know that the pandemic time and all that jam, but they want to be kids. They want to mm-hmm. come out. They want to play. Like, I have a kindergarten. I know my daughter is a kindergarten. I have mm-hmm. been teaching her for four good years, you know, like indoors and everything. So she was so excited in going out. So, like, <laughs> now, even though, yeah, even though she's sick with her, we allow her to go. She's going two days in. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, she's going. Oh, that's And good. she loves it. She can't wait. She's there. <laughs> Yeah, anytime we say, okay, go to bed, you know, tomorrow you're going to school. We say, am I going to the daycare or to school school? That's how, <laughs> <laughs> That's how she said. You know why she, she's asking? Because she knows when she woke up one day, the world changed. So she's like, okay, I got to get this straight. Let me know what we're going to do for tomorrow. <laughs> uh-huh. so- I would tell her, you're going to school, school. And she is always so happy. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to see my teachers. That, that, she's so excited in going, and she loves it, you know? That's Sometimes excellent. when they go to school now, she, I think they're about five. Sometimes they are five in class. Mm-hmm. And they go out to play. They play outside in the playground, even though the teachers sometimes give them restrictions, you know, about what to do and what not to do. But... They are still having fun. They are still having their own little fun. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So she is always excited to go. And, you know, I have an um, 11th grader. Oh, okay. I have my, yeah, I have my oldest son. Oh, that's right. To, that's right. Yes, yeah. that is trying to take his GED for him to go to college. Mm-hmm. So we are not even thinking about the financial part yet. <laughs> yeah, for him, we are just trying for him to say, Pay attention on your school so you can get your GED and go to college. So he is doing good on it. And my 11th grader, you know, when they just came back from Africa, mm-hmm. you know, he was trying to get used to the system. He wasn't doing good at first, but now he is doing perfectly good. And you have to be on top of it. I have to be calling every day, the teachers, everything, because some emails you don't even see them. Right. Right. They will be sending emails for you, emails, and I prefer they go to school. When they go to school, it will be very, very much better. Right, Because right. you get information quickly and everything. Mm-hmm. But now you have to be calling, and I'm doing my own work, paying attention on them. You have to be calling, make sure everything is okay. But now he's doing perfectly well. Amen. That's yeah, good. He's That's doing good. perfectly well. His grades are all good. And I, I was like, oh, maybe when he's home, it's very convenient, you know? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> now I'm telling him, but you have to go to school. I want to give it for him to go to school. I said, okay. So everything is going on good. Well, that's good. Um, yeah. what I, to wind up, um, uh, we need to address. And I'm calling it the new church. The church is neither new nor old. It's, you know, God has been existing forever because we are uh, Christian. So we've been existing forever. But I call it the new church because we have to do things differently. Um, old church, you come to church um, and you knew where you was going to sit, a general area. 
And you meet up, it was like a social there, because you meet up with all your friends, you haven't seen them for the week. You know, it it was a good, welcoming feeling. Now it feels like a sterile, mostly hospital, because you go there, you got to do your forehead, um, you have to do the the, um, uh, hand sanitizer, or, or like my granddaughter, she's so cute. She said, "Hanitizer." I said, "It's not hanitizer. <laughs> it's hand sanitizer." She said, "Grandma, that's too long. It's hanitizer." I said, "Okay, hanitizer." <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we look. We have to do quote unquote the hanitizer, and uh-huh. we always at our church we spray every time we leave, even if it's not a service. We still spray, spray down stuff um, uh-huh. to keep everything. So that's how the new church is. It's like a sterile hospital. We, the church is a hospital already because, you know, we go there to get healing spiritually, economically, mental. You know, it's just a healing. So that's why it's a hospital anyway. But now it is a sterile hospital because um, you don't have to worry about anything once you're inside of um, God's house, which is the brick and mortar. Um, mm-hmm. Now, the, also the new church is online. You know, um, that is the new church. Um, prime example, this Zoom to Facebook um, with us on Blog Talk, and then I'm going to try to extend it other ways, too, because somebody's like, what about Twitter? What about this? I'm like, oh, goodness, y'all are really stretching me now, <laughs> you know, because I don't even use Twitter, so now i got to do a lot of reading. Mm-hmm. But um, so the new church also is the church that is online. Because a lot of people want to go to church, mostly the um, elderly, but it's not advisable for them to be around people. I'm just trying to get some of this hair. That's why I keep doing this. But it's not advisable for them to go. So they do enjoy. Um, I did do a joke uh, on Sunday um, because we had to, because of snow or the um, weather conditions, we had to do Uh church at home. So I was laughing with one of my friends because I'm from the old school church. Your shoes are supposed to match your purse. And Dr. Kimmy know where I'm coming from. When you went to the church when you was growing up, your shoes are going to match your purse. So um, <laughs> so I asked one of my friends, I said, okay, since we're doing this new church, which is all online, do my, do my bedroom slippers have to match my purse too? And she fell out laughing. She was like, yes, they all have to match. I said, oh, okay, okay, I understand. <laughs> So, you know, how are we preparing for when, when church is re-entered? You know, right now most of us are still stuck at the 50% because of what is happening in the environment. It's not because we like it that way because I, I feel yeah. sometimes so bad for those people. Like, can you imagine you have 3,000 congregations, so mean only half can go, which means you might be wind up doing two services. You know, mm-hmm. so how we, you know, we, we got to prepare for when everybody is able to come back in. I'm going to give you a prime example. Like us, um, we have that bay door. So what we're doing is we're going to put up a tent right by the bay door. So therefore, they can still see and hear uh, pastor, but the overflow will be inside the tent, of course, with the six feet apart. So we can make mm-hmm. sure that we have. Um, enough room because you know in the wintertime people kind of hibernate but in the spring and summer they're ready to get out and then yeah. near the end of the summer and fall uh-huh. they're taking vacations you know oh, yeah. because winter is getting ready to come so I, I know that splurge because I think we spring forward in like 30 days or something like that um, so people is going to be coming out hibernation they're going to be ready to do something because remember this has been one complete year when March hit so, you know, people is like, you know what, I, I got to go back to see. And I always say my people. So I got to go see my people. So I need to go back to church. So um, just uh, be throwing out suggestions. Uh, while we're doing that, the number to call in if you do want to join or you have a suggestion, because that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're just trying to see exactly what's, what's going on. That's why it's real talk. We're just talking to try to, you know, figure out some things. But the number is 646 646- Five six four nine eight four two, and call and um, talk with us. You know, it says friends. We love friends, so come and call us and talk to us. So we're gonna go to Reverend Akeem, uh because we know that she has her glorious, fantastic church um, under her overseer, which is her uh, very anointed 
Dr. Akeem. Uh, <laughs> and right, and they are part of Jesus Without Borders, which is a fantastic right. name. Because that means when you hear that, you know, ain't nobody in that church is trying to put them in a box. So if you're trying to get a Jesus in a box, you can't go. Don't go to that church because they're gonna tell you Jesus is not inside of a box. So, uh, <laughs> so what are y'all doing to try to just prepare, you know, or or do a listing of what you have to do? And see, the reason I'm asking you is because I do know that um, you're in Virginia, so some of your rules is different than the rules yeah. that we have in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know Maryland is very, very sick. But yeah. Of course, you know, here, yeah. When it comes to church, you know, most of the people, they are very comfortable in staying home. Mm-hmm. They are very, very comfortable in staying home. Most of the people now are, you know, when you ask them, they say they are doing church online. I'm watching online. I'm watching online. So, but we still continue to take our precautions. We're putting the sign at the door. You know, that you come in with your marks and you sit in by family members. Like if this is your family, you sit together. Right. We don't do what we used to do before, like hugs. And like when it's time to welcome visitors, we hug them. Yes. That's what we do in church. We do like this. We we'll look at the person and we say, do like this. <laughs> yeah, now we just wave, you know. Uh-huh. We wave and say, hi, you're welcome. You're welcome to stay right here. Now we just wave and do all that. Mm-hmm. Even the mics now, we have to be wiping it with um, 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 this sanitizer wipes and mm-hmm. all that. It's kind of hard, but we just have to do what we got to do. We got to. We got to. Oh, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's hit so many people that I know, so many mm-hmm. people I know that not even make it for the crossover. Um, yeah. Some of them didn't even make it to see their birthday. So yeah. nobody has to tell me that it's real because I know yeah. that it's real. It's not because I'm looking at statistics. It's not because I'm looking at the bid count or lack of a bid for COVID, but it's because it has really um, touched in my actual circle of friends. So I do know that it is real. Um, now we're going to swing over to Dr. Kimmy. Because um, Dr. Kimmy is very active in her church. So what, have, what, have, what are y'all doing? Have your church opened or are you still online? Oh, no. We are still online on um, Wednesdays and Sundays on Facebook and YouTube. We don't see us ourselves opening back up until probably late, like July or August, due to the fact that um, the membership is really – heavy, and so we're trying to see how many people get vaccinated. And so even when we do open or reopen, the church will not be the same. You will not be able to go into the sanctuary and go to your um, regular seat and hug on your brothers and your sisters. I mean, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. I... I know it's going to be quite it's interesting because it won't be the same. You know how you go to church and you're like, hey, girl, you, you're talking and you're hugging. None of that. It's like we'll still be social distancing. And, um, and then how will they do singing? Because, you know, when you sing, you're, you know, you're shooting out, you know, some of the germs that comes from, you know, your saliva. So it's like you don't see everything. And sometimes you see those that aren't seen, and so they probably have to, have to have glass around the stage and stuff. It's going to be quite interesting how it will work. Yeah. It's going to be uh, different. But I do and, know I've seen – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I would just say, but God is still in control. <laughs> He's still in control. He is still in control. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. But I did see one church. I don't know what it was, but it was, uh, it was strictly online. But they had their choir, um, it might have been even pre-taped to come and think about it, but they had them up on Zoom where you've seen all these faces. But they, okay, you know it's the difference between singing and when somebody say they sang. They sang those songs. I don't know how they did it, but it was glorious. 
So I was thinking about that when you said that, you know, how they're going to do the choir and this and that, which is very interesting because every day almost when I'm reading, I'm, I'm learning more and more of how God is just so awesome because he puts these ideas in different people all over the world for such a time as this. You know, first, nobody knew we was, we was just making masks. We was trying to make it this way, make it that way. Now we know what kind of mask is supposed to be. We know how to wear the mask. And a lot of oh, people yeah. say nose mask to make sure people understand it's got to cover your nose. Um, right. And not your beard. I've been seeing a lot of men, uh, no, we don't need to cover your beard. Cover your nose first. <laughs> I don't think your beard is going to catch COVID. But your nose, you got to cover your nose. I'm just telling you. But um, <laughs> but uh, we we I, I read a lot about how people have invented this and how people invented this. That's like on the commercial, they got the new spray now that kills the COVID germs specifically for your clothes, your shoes, you know. Mm. And then I read, okay. right, then I read how they got the one for specifically for, you know, how you, which people don't think about, those keypads when you're in a store and you have to enter for credit or whatever, they got something specifically that the stores are ordering just for that because what was happening, it was it was really making the equipment decay faster which keep wiping it with alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. So now they got these special uh, products to clean the actual keypad that's on there. So it's so many different uh, things that, that they have. You know, when people went was out there on, I think it was on YouTube, where uh, you got to wear gloves because uh, you can catch it off the handle of the gas pump. You know, uh-huh. yes. so it's 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 just awesome God because He created all of us. We don't think alike, which is great because that's if we all thought like we'd still be in phase one of COVID. We would never venture out of it because all of us is thinking the exact same way. Um, the final question for tonight is, what 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 are we doing to let people know that God still loves you? Because remember, we don't have riots in the capital. We have had um, really um, a dysfunctional uh, nation because I've never seen it where it was us against them or them against us. And then we had the COVID. And then we, some people that had stocks, is, you know, da, 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 uh, the highest ever for unemployment. People are still today are still um, threatened of not having food. So how do you approach that person when this person is already out there on the street, they don't see any hope, their child is able to go to school, because, you know, school is really stepping up to the game. But how do you let them know Jesus loves them? You know, we can say it, but what are we doing to show them to let them know? So I'm going to pass it back to Dr. Kimmy. Well, I really believe that we are living in a perilous times, and uh, basically, um, I would tell them that God still loves you, and really, if you go into some of the beautiful writings in the New Testament, you will see that uh, we are living in a perilous times, and he will still put no more on you than to bear. But however, he has allowed the prince of the earth to bring down this virus. He didn't do it. He allowed it. So with that being said, if you are a child of the most high king, you are covered no matter what happens on this earth because at the end of the day, we will have a expiration on earth. So we must also participate in the more things that are in heaven and we must build our hopes on the riches of heaven, such as joy, peace, love, and the remaining fruit of the Spirit. So I would tell, well, I would like let people know that God still loves you. He knows what's going yeah. on. He knows this was coming. He knows. He is still yeah. in control. Yeah. Can no, vi- ain't no virus bigger, bigger than God. There is no problem that he cannot solve. So 
don't focus on, I mean, I really believe still, you know, I look at CNN, but I don't allow that to dictate my mood because I'm still reminded that God is, is still in control. He is the I am God. He is the beginning and the ending. He will never um, allow his words to come back void. So focus on those things and the beautiful writings and the scriptures and the Bible and find some scriptures that you will you cannot hold on to and you know keep some scriptures in your um, in your heart in your cord because this is nothing. I I still believe that um, I see more to come. And so with that being said, what this has taught us also is how strong are we away from the church? Do we actually? I mean, I still believe in the spiritual gym because I call church a spiritual gym. I still believe in going there, but how are you when you're away from the spiritual gym? You know, there are times we take a break from the physical gym for our bodies. So how are you? Are you spiritually fit? So this is teaching teaching us how we are when it comes to our spiritual man. Are we truly fit for the Lord? Because you can still praise the Lord in your house, in in the car, um, you could be you know, listening to, like, um, the Bible, um, you know, that man, you know, talking to you and reciting the Bible to you and still have that praise in your heart, it just depends on your relationship. So I will tell, uh, well, if I someone to, you know, take heed to your relationship with the Lord and focus on those things and you will be okay. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So what what um you have to add, Reverend Solomon, to speak to the people. Let's speak to the people. That's why we're here. Yeah. So now is the time I we say once you have life, you have hope. You know, it it, it say um and we used to say it it Amen. dead um a a living dog is better than the dead lion. Amen. So once you have life, you have hope. And this is the time also we say those that know they are God, they shall be strong Amen. and they shall do exploits. Amen. You know, with all what is happening, this is the time I um, we should show love more, you know, by being nice and sweet as much as you can, mm-hmm. even with people you meet on the way, because we know a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff. So, you know, simple niceness, simple being sweet to someone can lift someone's feet, can encourage them. You know, simple smiles, even though they can't see our smiles, you know, but <laughs> because it's all covered in the in the, in the, in the mask. I know. Yeah. I did see somebody that yeah. had a clear mask, but I was like, yeah, yeah that's just overdoing it. I'm, I'm good. I'm uh-huh. good. <laughs> you know, but... Simple being nice to each other, I mean, uh-huh. it goes a long way. Amen. You know, it lifts someone's spirit up. Amen. Amen. Um, what Amen. I have before we end and introduce ourselves, Job twenty two twenty eight, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. And I'm saying that because we have to decree and declare every day to over ourselves. Then we're able, we are able to go out there and let people know, hey, this is what you need to do. Um, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. As a believer, your mouth is your weapon for deliverance. It is your weapon for change. It's your weapon for supernatural turnaround. Jesus said, anything you don't want, use your mouth to cast it out in Matthew 17, 20, Mark 11, 22 through 24. You must learn to decree what you want and reject everything you don't want in your life. Our declaration of faith will always be honored and confirmed by God. Everything we bind on earth is bind in heaven. Everything we loose on earth is loose in heaven. Therefore, today you shall be decreeing blessings over your life. You shall be decreeing fruitfulness over your life. You shall be decreeing all kinds 
of blessings over your life, and they shall be established in mm-hmm. Jesus' name. The decree and declare we're going to do today to end it, and then we can use it throughout the week, is, Father, I thank you for empowering me with divine authority in Jesus' Amen. name. I decree Amen. that before the end of this year, my Amen. God shall show up in my life in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And the last one is, I decree that before the end of this year, all my concerns shall turn to testimonies in Jesus' Amen. name. So Amen. that's what we can do to encourage those that's out there because they think they're alone. They think, why is this happening to me? God, help me. Just because he's not answering don't mean it's a denial. You keep doing what you need to do. If God yes. whispers to you and say, today I just want you to praise me, you praise him. Wherever Amen. you at, you praise him. If he whispers oh, yeah. to you and say, the next person I see that you see, you give them uh, a $3 offering. You know, because God says sometimes the odd numbers. You give them a $3 offering. You might say, yes, all I own is five. You better give that $3 offering so Mm -hmm. you can understand what God is trying to unloose for you. So as we go around the uh, table, um, I'm going to start with Reverend Akeem. She can introduce herself and tell us how we can get in contact with her. And then I'm going to go to Dr. Kimmy. And then I'm going to end up and pray us out until we meet another glorious day, which I do. I want you all to know, okay, I'm putting it out there, that this Saturday is our women's virtual prayer breakfast, okay? And we at Holy Mountain International Ministries, we have the honor and the privilege of having the one and only renowned, world-famous author, uh-huh. Reverend Salome Akin. Glory <laughs> to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, so my name is Minister Salome Ikem. Um, we are at Woodbridge, Virginia. Our church is Jesus Without Borders. You can find us at one. 4339 Jefferson Davis Highway, Woodbridge, Virginia. I'm, a, I'm an author. Um, my books are How to Train Up a Child and Why Women Should Pray. You can get that from Amazon.com. Yeah, so we are always open. And, of course, this Saturday, too, we have a, a, a date. You know, it's Valentine's time. So we have a date, a dinner date. At five, it's starting at five. It's gonna be good teaching it's between uh, married people and singles. Those that are preparing, getting themselves to set to get their Mr. Right or Mrs. Right. You know, we have good teachings. We have great men of God that God is using in this our end time generation to bring down the word of God to give us the instruction that God wants from us. Amen. Amen. Yes. Tell us about your uh, nonprofit. Yeah, I have a nonprofit which is Ingozi Siku Cell Foundation. Um, we started this because my daughter Ingozi has Siku Cell, and she's having all the medical facilities here by the grace of God. But people back home don't have that. When this, when you say Siku Cell back home, it's like a death sentence. So we are helping them to get their medication. Some don't even have good places to stay. We are helping them with that. Some don't have clothes, shoes. You know, we are also helping them with that. Amen. 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 Yes. So now, you know, let me let me do my introduction for Dr. Kimmy. Dr. Kimmy is the owner, operator, CEO of Elations Magazine, Elations Radio. Um, We would have been blessed last year, if it wasn't for COVID, to actually go to, I'm telling you, the last event that we went to was awesome. Um, I pray, I pray, I pray that we're able to actually make it this year. Um, As she already told you, she has two wonderful children that I've met several times. Um, and she is a very devout worker inside of a church. There's a difference between going to church and 
being a person that is heating up the chair because you just want to check the block that you're going to church and actually doing things and helping in church. Um, she's also um, a worker out there in the field because she does a lot of work that you can't even label. You know, if somebody's in trouble, sure. Dr. Kimmy is the doctor. She's trying to yeah. call on God and let God use her to get done what has to be done. Yeah. So, Kimmy, yeah. tell us about yeah. yourself. Well, you know me. I'm a laid-back person like you. I am Kimmy Kim, and uh, mm-hmm. I just love the Lord, and I am honored to be an honorary. I have an honorary doctorate from your wonderful school. Can't wait to we come back and see you in Maryland, me and the girls, and what else? Um, you can find me on Elation Radio um no, Elation Magazine and Gmail, if you need per request or anything. Um, I am also on LinkedIn. I am on Instagram. And now I'm on Clubhouse. And also, I have the opportunity, if you are a small business owner and you're looking for to um, be funded, I have the opportunity where you can get funded. And I am also opening a bookkeeping slash um, accounting uh, firm or bookkeeping for small businesses or nonprofits. So if you ever need me and your services and you need someone to help you do the startup business when it comes to a county, I am the person. But overall, I just love serving people. I'm a servant for the most high. And my sister, my sister, this was well needed. I needed this podcast. I was like, where are my sister at? We are back. We got, <laughs> we got, um, and this is well, this is right on time because we are in the month of February and love month and so I'm just grateful that yeah. you um are here and my sister you brought it and um I can't wait to meet you. Mm-hmm, me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, amen, hey, amen. I'm glad hey, I'm glad everybody had a wonderful time. Uh, I did step back from a lot of things because I want God to direct me. I don't want to do everything by just checking the block, checking the block. Um, I want to make sure that I'm guided and God is telling me what to do. And this is a new look. You see the new flyer um, because what we're doing is we need to now bring the actual words from the Bible and let people see how to apply them in their life. You know, through this time, as long as we've been on, we've been mostly just giving them just cereal. You know, they they should be now moving to meat because we are at war. You cannot negotiate ever with the devil. So, therefore, um, we're at a time now that we should be on meat, running, knowing about the armor, getting everything done. So that's what was spoken to me in spirit. Uh, My name is Dr. Rhonda Bello. I am one of the pastors at Holy Mountain International Ministries Outreach um, location, Greenbelt, well, Beltsville, Maryland. And we are 6721 Mid-Cities in Beltsville. We have Nigeria, Lagos. Um, We also have the Bellows Legacy Medical Center, um, that I do still thank everybody um, that contributed. So I got when I go back, I will actually be taking the pictures, and you will see the tree of life. Um, it's, everything's growing. I am also the CEO for the nonprofit Through the Eyes of Esther, which started under as a program through Holy Mountain, and now we have branched out on our own. God is good. And we have Esther's House. It's Esther's House. That's uh, right there by the actual hospital. And that is where children come and get tutoring. They can learn um, etiquette, both uh, their own cultural etiquette and American etiquette because a lot of them want to go to school and stuff over there. So it's more or less to try to help them to do integration. Um, But like we said, we have a program coming up this weekend, which is, Women's Prayer Breakfast, and we already did our introduction of our author, and um, she owns her own daycare, and she has a nonprofit, and she has 
a whole house full of children that's just her own. So we're going to always pray for Reverend Solomon because she's always busy. But she's going to give us one hour of her time um, on this Saturday, and it's the first, uh, the second Saturday of every month. The first Saturday of every month is Holy Mountain International Ministries virtual prayer breakfast, and then it's just a women's actual prayer breakfast. Mm-hmm. Also coming up that I'm going to share uh, with us, it's called When Queens Meet. And I'm one of the speakers that's going to be on the 18th at 7 p.m., and I'll be sending out that information. Um, and what it is is it's a lot of us that have established businesses, and um, we have documentation of how we've been working on them, how it's been working, through everything that's going on. Um, and it's more or less to give women encouragement that, you know what, we can do it. Hey, we got a vice president of the United States, so, you know, we got to come up. We got to come up with our game because if, if that happens, we know everything can happen. So when Queens meet, that is going to be on the 18th at 7 p.m. And everybody's seen when I was passing it out, which is the real issues, and you see how it's more lighter, it's livelier, um, mm-hmm. because we want you to concentrate on what God is telling us to speak to you and not concentrate on what we are actually trying to do. Because it doesn't matter what we do, just as long as you pick up what God wants you to hear. Um, with that being said, is all hearts clear? Do we have any alibis that anybody want to say? Well, I want everybody to go out there um, in Facebook and Elations Radio that we all love you. So this is your virtual hug, virtual kisses. So we want everybody to know that. And like I said, at any given time, we're going to keep making sure we put the number out there because we want to hear from you. Um, We don't want to just be the one doing all the talking because, you know, God has thousands, millions. So I know it's not just us three. And I'm not going to deceive myself. Um, We're going to just go back real quick. So make sure that you remember what uh, we put out there. Father, I thank you for empowering me with divine authority in Jesus' name. I decree that before the end of this year, my God shall show up in my life in Jesus' name. I decree that before the end of this year, all my concerns shall turn to testimony in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you for this event. We thank you, Lord. We already know what we have already declared. Creed. We have decreed it openly, and it's already in the atmosphere, and you're answering us mightily. We thank you today, Lord, because we're in the land of the living, and we thank you, Lord. That means we know you still got a reason, mission, and a purpose for us, and we thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for giving us this song to give you all the praise and admiration. Lord God, we will continue to give you the glory. Lord God, protect and cover us with the blood of Jesus over our families, over our children, Lord God, over our communities and our churches. We ask you, Lord, because we know where our help comes from. It comes from you. And, Lord God, as we are leaving here tonight, we're leaving the radio station. We're leaving faithful, but we will never leave your presence. Lord God, we will continue not to walk but to run towards you, to get to seek you, Lord, because we know that you are God that can do anything but fail. Lord God, we understand and have already declared that we can never negotiate with the devil. Lord God, we are standing on the firm ground, and we are waiting for you to direct us because we know you've given us a prescribed destiny. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And until we meet again, everybody have a safe and blessed week. Um, Be careful in the snow. And bundle up, don't nobody be telling me, oh, I caught a little cold. No, you should catch a sweater. That's what you got to catch. Or, or uh, um, uh, what you call those things, a scarf. <laughs> but we're not catching any colds. That's all we're catching. All right, so we meet again. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.
where the sun is always shining, folks are always smiling, go away. Where crying is unheard of, and dying ain't even thought of, oh, a place where there's no color skin, and you won't find no sin, no. I want to get there, yeah, I'm going to get there one day. I want to get there, I'm going to get there one day. Get there one day. 